Okay, some more enthalpy here, all right? So when you go into the second year, you'll start looking at some other enthalpy changes on top of what you've already learned. This tutorial is about the enthalpy of solution. So the enthalpy change when things are actually dissolved, okay? So delta H sol for short, and we've got our little theta up here just to say that it's in standard conditions. So we're gonna go dive straight in and look at the definition of this, which is cast iron, of course. So it's the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic substance dissolves in water to give a solution of infinite dilution. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but it does exactly what it says in the tin. Really importantly, standard, we've got one mole of a substance, okay? It's always standard in our delta H definitions, but this time it's an ionic substance, dissolving in water to give a solution, and again, really importantly, of infinite dilution. Now, that sounds complex, but essentially all it means is there's plenty of water to make sure that all of that one mole of substance has been dissolved, okay? So that's all that is, but it's really important to the definition. So of course, as with most definitions in chemistry, we can actually just put an equation to that. So in other words, what we're saying is if we take one mole of an ionic substance, so for example, good old sodium chloride there, well, it's the enthalpy change when one mole of that turns into aqueous ions, when it dissolves in water. So of course, it's when it gives Na plus Aq, and of course, Cl minus Aq. So you can apply that to any salt. Just be careful with your balancing. If you've got like two metals or two non-metal atoms, then of course your balancing over on the right-hand side here needs to take that into account. So that's our equation, if you like, for any salt when it dissolves, okay? So delta H solution equation is solid salt to our aqueous ions, okay? So as with enthalpy, any enthalpy, then of course there is an equation. So what's our equation? Well, it forms two parts. As with any delta H, okay, I'll say any, but as you've learned within the Bourne Harbor process, this might not be straightforward. There might be a couple of processes that the sodium chloride needs to go through in order to turn into aqueous ions. And it's no different, like I said, from the Bourne Harbor cycle. There are a couple of processes that this sodium chloride needs to go through. And we need to take both of those into account. And that shows in our equation. So the delta H solution of a salt equals the delta H lattice dissociation. So we're breaking that lattice uh, into its gaseous ions. We've come across this before in Bourne Harbor. But that's plus the sum of the delta H hydrations of the ions, okay? So we'll talk about what these two mean now, okay? So we're, we're gonna calculate delta H sol, but what do these two mean? So first of all, a brief reminder. So our delta H lattice dissociation. Straight from our Bourne Harbor, we can take solid sodium chloride in this example and turn that into gaseous ions. So that's our equation for lattice dissociation. Now, just a brief reminder on this, what type of enthalpy is this? Well, it's actually an endothermic process. Why? Because we're breaking the electrostatic attractions here to actually form our gaseous ions. So in other words, we are breaking electrostatic attractions. So in other words, this is an endothermic process, okay? Now, every single time, every day of the week, this is going to be a positive delta H. We need to put energy in to actually do that. So that's a brief reminder of what lattice dissociation is. But once those ions are dissociated into gaseous ions, we then need to hydrate them. They need to actually dissolve in water. And that's where our delta H hydration comes into play. So delta H hydration can be represented by equation by taking our gaseous ions and turning them into aqueous ions. So they're associating with water molecules. So we say the sum of our hydration up here 
because we, we've got two different ions to take into account. We've got our positive ion, which needs to be turned from gaseous to aqueous. We've got our negative ions that need to be turned from gaseous to aqueous. We need the values for both of these to put into this equation. So what do I mean by hydration? Well, let's say we take our, uh, say, Na plus ion, okay? When that goes into water, what happens is our water molecules associate themselves around that positive ion. So we've got one water molecule, a second water molecule, and a third. So who knows how many that might be, but essentially it releases energy when they do, because when they do, these delta negative oxygens, because that's the negative end of water, will associate around these and electrostatic attractions. Forces will be occurring here, forces of attraction. And of course, when bonds form, when forces of attraction form, that is an exothermic process. So in other words here, i.e. for our delta H hydration, we are forming forces of attraction. So what we can say is that again, every day of the week, when this happens, this is an exothermic process, okay? Exothermic process. So every single value you get for delta H hydration, when these water molecules associate around the positive and of course negative ions, it's gonna be an exothermic process, therefore a negative delta H. So we can explain what that is, but you know what? Let's put a definition on it. So it's the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous ions form aqueous ions. That's all we need to say. But again, it's one mole as standard for any delta H uh, definition here. So let's stock take here. What we've got is a balance. When we look at the overall enthalpy change of solution, so when the enthalpy change of when anything dissolves, it's a balance between the endothermic process of breaking the lattice and the exothermic process of the water molecules arranging around the ions, both positive and negative. So it's a balance here. If this is a greater value than this, of course, we're gonna end up with a positive value. If this is greater than this, we're gonna end up with a negative value. So delta H solution can be either positive or negative. So what I'm saying is, it's all about a balance. So delta H solution is a balance between a positive delta H and a negative delta H. So for this kind of example here, delta H solution will equal delta H lat dis of uh, sodium chloride plus the delta H hydration of our sodium ions plus the delta H hydration of our chloride ions. You must include both, okay? And like I said, if there's more than one ion form, let's see if it's MgCl2, you need to add or account for the fact there are two chloride ions here. So this will be two times. If it was say sodium oxide, you Na2O, you need two sodiums here. So you need to multiply by the number of ions you have as well, okay? So calculating delta H solution can be positive or negative depending on this balance. But what does that mean? Well, delta H solution, if it's positive, it's less likely to be soluble. If it's negative, it's more likely to be soluble. So you may get questions on this. So a negative delta H solution, this is more likely to be soluble. Negative or the least positive because that releases energy when it dissolves, okay? Rather than needing energy to dissolve. So the negative ones or least positive ones are more likely to be soluble. But a word of caution, a final word of caution, it also takes into account entropy. Positive delta H solutions, so salts with positive delta H solutions, you think wouldn't be soluble. A lot of them are because we also need to take into account the entropy of the reaction. That's a different tutorial, okay? So don't worry about that for now. What we're concerned about here is our definition of delta H solution. One mole ionic substance to infinite dilution and make sure you know this equation. Speaking of equations, this is how we calculate delta H solution. It's a balance between this, which we already know, 
and this new term here, delta H hydration, whereby it's the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous ions forms aqueous ions. And it's a balance between the endothermic process of breaking the lattice and the exothermic process of hydrating those ions. And like I said, it can be positive or negative. So we're going to look at a couple of different questions now based on this, just to see what it is you should expect in terms of an exam.